The following presentation will discuss documentation and interpretation of the weekly calendar planning activity assessment tool. This module follows the parts 1 through 5 training videos. These training modules should be used in conjunction with the WCPA manual. This module will review documentation including forms utilized, information to be summarized, as well as considerations for interpretation. This will be followed by a case illustration. The WCPA is interpreted through a combination and synthesis of quantitative scores, skillful observation during the task, and information gained through the after-task interview. Interpretation of only one score area should be avoided as it can be misleading. The main areas assessed and documented include a performance profile, strategy usage, and client self-awareness. We will begin with the performance profile, which includes quantitative scores that can be presented. Please pause the video and take some time to view the WCPA scores typically included in this table. Alternatively, the information can be summarized in a visual profile to aid in interpretation. This visual profile reflects a high number of appointments entered with below average accuracy, rules followed, and planning time. The Error Analysis Profile provides another quick visual representation of the number, frequency, and pattern of errors. Use of this table is optional. In some situations, understanding error patterns helps to understand patterns that may influence performance on other IADL tasks. For example, you might ask, if the person omits or misses information on the WCPA, is this error emerging in other cognitively demanding tasks? Pages 51 to 53 in the WCPA manual outlines what specific error patterns may indicate. Rule breaks can occur for many different reasons and are analyzed in combination with error patterns and strategy use. As an example, a client that jumps into a task, misses many appointments, and is unable to follow rules can reflect a lack of pre-planning, difficulty restraining actions, and impulsivity. Pages 50 to 51 in the WCPA manual further discusses implications of broken rules. Document frequency of strategies used, including initiation and consistency. Strategy type is described by their general purpose, such as attending to key features, keeping track, simplifying or organizing, and monitoring performance. The effectiveness and ability to adjust strategy usage as needed is also documented. Finally, strategy generation is described based on the ability to identify alternate strategies in the after-task interview. Pages 54 to 56 in the WCPA manual further discusses analysis of strategies used. During the task, Awareness can be indicated through self-recognition of errors, correction of errors, and through facial expressions, statements of difficulty, or frustration. During the after-task interview, analyze how the client self-reflects on their process, strategies used, or things that could have been done differently. After-task perceptions are investigated through use of self-ratings, as well as time and accuracy estimations during the after-task interview. Finally, observe whether the test taker's self-ratings match those of the therapist. Pages 53 to 55 in the WCPA manual provides further information on client self-awareness. Additional information that may be included is as follows. Assistance given, for example, direct cues or scribing for patients with difficulty with handwriting. Environmental factors that could affect performance. For example, the atmosphere, interruptions, or self-generated distractions like the use of a smartphone or initiating conversation. You might also consider emotional stability or instability. How does the client manage emotions during the task? Page 56 of the WCPA manual also provides more information on this topic. Clients may have similar scores but implications for treatment could be very different. 
Always consider how the client approached the task, where difficulties emerged, effectiveness of strategies used, and their ability to self-monitor performance to guide treatment approaches. It is important to understand how difficulties with functional cognition impact occupational performance. Pages 57 to 76 of the WCPA manual provides examples of performance analysis and interpretation. The following case study will further illustrate documentation and interpretation of the WCPA. Kathy is a 52-year-old woman status post-traumatic brain injury. Prior to her injury, Kathy was independent in all ADLs and IADLs and worked as an administrative assistant in a busy accounting firm. Kathy is currently having difficulty with cognitively demanding IADL tasks such as managing finances. Her goal is to think clearly so that she can resume her previous lifestyle and return to work. As illustrated in the calendar and scoring worksheet, Kathy allotted an incorrect amount of time for the visit with cousin and dentist appointments. Kathy also made a location error with a self-recognition when entering the carpool appointment. These errors can be depicted in an error analysis profile as shown here. Kathy demonstrated average performance in appointments entered, accuracy, and rules followed. However, Kathy's planning and total time scores and efficiency score are below the fifth percentile, indicating that she required more time than other people in her age group to achieve low average accuracy. Kathy also used excessively more strategies when compared to other people in her age group, and this may have contributed to inefficiencies in her performance. Kathy followed four out of five rules. She crossed out one appointment, indicating that she was not able to generate an alternative method for correcting an error while still adhering to the rule. Kathy used numerous ineffective strategies that she quickly abandoned. She spent excessive time using strategies and methods that also led to confusion, such as crossing off appointments before entering them. During the after-task interview, she was unable to identify what she would do differently and described feeling overwhelmed and anxious. Overall, Kathy's approach increased effort and demands on cognitive resources. During the task, Kathy appeared very frustrated. She constantly and unsystematically checked herself, however, was aware of only one of four errors made. During the after-task interview, Kathy was able to identify strategies used and recognize that they did not work, however, she was unable to explain why. Kathy indicated the task was extremely difficult, but again, could not specify why which appeared to contribute to her increased anxiety and decreased self-efficacy. Refer to pages 68 to 69 in the WCPA manual for a copy of Kathy's after-task interview and performance ratings. Kathy was generally very anxious and overwhelmed with the demands of the task. She appeared to have difficulty holding on to the required information, attending to important details, or recognizing and handling conflicts as she entered the appointments. Kathy did not use strategies effectively to help manage task demands and did not identify errors or adjust performance as needed. OT intervention is recommended to help empower Kathy to use strategies that reduce performance errors and manage cognitive symptoms. Techniques may include mediation or questioning and self-assessment to promote self-monitoring and self-efficacy. Kathy may also benefit from support in strategy selection and implementation. Finally, self-regulation strategies may also help to control anxiety during multi-step or complex tasks. Recommendations are described in greater detail on page 69 of the WCPA manual. Please refer to pages 43 to 76 of the WCPA manual for more information about the variety of WCPA performance patterns and implications for treatment. This concludes the Part 6 WCPA Scoring and Documentation Training Module. 
Additional resources on functional cognition and the WCPA assessment tool can be found online at multicontext.net.